here are some really easy steps to help fast track your property portfolio that I too implemented for the first five years. And mind you, these are what I call the easy things as opposed to the harder or more difficult things such as like doing a, a cosmetic renovation or doing a subdivision or, or saving for each deposit for the next one. So these are just the things that I did. And they're so easy. <laughs> so number one is go and grab a bank evaluation of every single property every six months. So every six months, it's quite easy to do this. This is what I do. I send an email to my broker, my buyer's agent, and directly to my bank and say, hey team, this is my property address. Can I please grab a bank evaluation, please? Now, what that will highlight very quickly is you will typically have three different responses <laughs> because banks truly don't know what properties are worth themselves. Everyone's kind of guessing based on an average. And so what this will highlight is much quicker on is it will basically remove a lot of assumptions that you think your property hasn't grown and you're just collecting data at this point to say, oh, actually, well, this property's got, this, this particular bank is willing to give me $50,000 more than that bank. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Let's pull this out and go for the next one. So that equity amount, just by you simply doing that, might be the make or break difference of you being able to come up with the money for the next deposit. So for example, in today's current market, let's just say you need, I'm just gonna make an average number, let's just say you need $100,000 for the next deal, right? To cover all bills and all expenses, deposits, stamp duties, professional fees, maintenance, buffers, that sort of stuff. And let's just say you were $20,000 short. Let's just say one bank has said, yeah, sure, here's $80,000. But little did you know, there was another bank that was willing to give you the $100,000, which is that extra 20 grand that you needed to get across the line for the next one. So it's okay to go and get three bank evaluations every six months. I really encourage it. Okay, number two, there's gonna be one in here that not that many people know about. So when you go and grab that bank evaluation, the second thing that I want you to do is formally get the bank to reduce your LVR. Now, guess what that means? So what is LVR? LVR stands for loan to value ratio. It is essentially what the bank sees the value of the property as minus your debt. Now, if you're an active property investor and putting up smaller deposits, like for example, five or 10% deposits, usually when you get those loans to begin with is the interest rates are typically higher. But when your LVRs lower a little bit, when you get into the next 10% bracket, like for example, if you're moving from 85% LVR to 80% or 80% down to 70%, there are a lot of lenders out there who will give you better interest rates if your LVR looks smaller on paper and your LVRs naturally go up. You can either do it the hard way by paying down the debt or you do it the easier way by buying in smarter areas where the values of the properties just keep going up naturally. And so when your LVRs drop, you can go, hey, Mr. Broker or bank, can we please formally tell the bank that this is my new LVR and let's just see if we can get a better interest rate. So as you can see, it's quite healthy to consistently get bank evaluations on your properties especially in that first three to five year period where you're like you're hustling and you're really trying to get compound and get a few properties up your sleeve. This is the exact sort of stuff that I did. And then to my second point, whilst you're doing that at the same time, always make sure that you're asking your bank for a better interest rate. Uh, every six months is a good amount. A lot of people think it's a lot of work. It's really not. It's one email to your broker or to the bank directly. Just say, hey, I'm at the six month mark. Can you offer me a better interest rate, please? And typically it could just be with a re reply back to an email saying, yep, I'll accept it. So like not really ever any paperwork required. Or if you're smart, you could actually just set up some automation to do it for you. <laughs> or a good broker should reach out to you as well every six months to say, hey Liv, it's been six months since we looked at your loans. Let's just have a look at some other lenders. Uh, one of my brokers actually has like a rate tracker which sends us alerts uh, for better interest rates as well. Okay, the third one now. This one honestly isn't spoken about much and it might also be a little bit controversial as well. So the third and final one is don't trust your property manager on what the rental increase could be for renewing a rent on a property. I'll give you an example. So say it's two months away from your current tenant lease being able to be renewed. So we're at two months out. Let's just say your tenant is currently be renting for $400 a week and your property manager says, hey, Livia, this rent's due for a rental increase. We suggest by extending it for another 12 months and offering it at a $20 per week increase. 
So it'd be $420 per week. Now, I'm not making this data up. 100% of the time when I have received that for any one of my property managers in any of my states across any of my properties, 100% of the time they've underquoted me. Now I just wanna let you know, this is for renewals, not for a brand new rental appraisal where there's someone not in there yet. This is for renewing an existing tenant. Now, what we need to do as investors is take the ownership of stepping in to understand how to do it ourselves. So if you don't know how to truly evaluate what your uh, property could be rented for, comment the word rent increase in this video and I'll send you my training, a link to my training specifically around how you can work out what your property should be rented for very easily for free from your phone, just really using realestate.com. It is a formula that has worked for me 100% of the time, never failed me. So in that example, let's just say they're renting for 400. They say, oh, we can pop it up to 420, but I'm having a look online. I'm like, hang on a second, based on really true comparables, me being very, very average, actually I could see that this particular property could be rented for $450. So that's $30 per week. So that $30 per week equals over $1,500 a year. That's a lot of money that could literally pay for an entire council rates or cover the difference of the massive interest rate hike that we've just had in order for you to be able to keep that property so that that property doesn't go onto the market uh, for another owner occupier to buy, keeping enough properties on the market for renters. What you also need to think about is that extra $1,500 can make a big difference when it comes to your borrowing capacity. So let's just say if you apply this formula across five properties, that's nearly an additional $8,000 per year. What? And with lending in this current high interest rate environment, it's roughly about five times your income. That's about an extra $40,000 in additional potential borrowing capacity that you're also missing out on. Again, which could be the make or break deal that you need in order to get to the next property. Now you might be thinking, oh, but ethically that doesn't sound right to be bumping up the rent to the absolute maximum that we can get. Yes, it does. I'll tell you why. In Australia, we need landlords. We need investors bad. If we can't afford to keep a property, that is one less property that a tenant could rent. And what I also teach my clients is ethical of investing around providing a really high quality service. So all of my tenants are my clients. I charge a pretty high premium on top of whatever the average is. So I'm always the top of whatever the average is for that year. So I'm never overcharging. However, I can sleep well at night because I know that I'm making the most amount of money that I can off of it. Whenever something breaks in any one of my houses, I fix it so quickly. Within 24 hours, I've responded to a, something being broken and I don't think about it and I don't hesitate. I'm also a tenant where I live. I'm a rent vester. And so I'm okay at charging top dollar because I know I'm going, to I'm going to provide in return a really high quality service by fixing shit straight away. Now, within reason, I'm not going to be like, oh, tenants just asked for a new spa to be installed. Obviously not. And over my eight years in of investing, on average, my tenants stay in my properties for, eight year uh, for six years. My tenants know if something gets broke, gets broken, uh, it will be attended to within 24 to 48 business hours. So to recap, get a bank evaluation, three bank evaluations every six months on all of your properties. Formally tell your bank to lower your LVR and ask for a better interest rate every six months. And last but not least, learn how to evaluate your rents and don't always take your property manager's word for it. So again, if you want the free training on how to evaluate your rent on a property, comment the word rental increase below and I'll have my team send it to you.